Welcome to Dave TV, DCRTV.com, for the 9th of April, 2011. Hey, I got the date right. Hey, I'm getting better. The old timers are slowing down. Uh, and welcome to the show today. Uh, we got the nostalgia-based show for you. But first, we wanted to uh, show you what was in Sunday's Washington Post, even though it's Saturday. If you look in tomorrow's Washington Post in the uh, at, uh, Washington Post magazine section, you'll see a nice little piece on uh, WHFS DJ Jonathan Weasel Gilbert. Whatever happened to him, huh? Anyhow, there's uh, there's Jonathan Weasel Gilbert there. Uh, well, whatever happened to him, he's got a show on uh, the weekends on WTMD 89.7 out of... Uh, Towson University up there in Baltimore. It's got a pretty good signal in the Baltimore area and parts of Montgomery and PG County, but it's kind of hard to hear down here in Northern Virginia. Although, you know, there's one parking space in front of my condo there. If I park in one parking space, one particular parking place, and to my car radio at 89.7, TMD comes in great. The minute I back out of that parking place, it's gone, and it's hard to get here in my condo. But that one parking place, so um, if I were to listen to TMD and no one's parked in that one spot, I pull in there and I can hear TMD just great. Plus, you can also hear them on the internet. What is it? WTMD.org. And uh, Weasel's got a good show there. Anyhow, uh, Weasel's last gig in the Washington area, of course, was on the old um, the Globe, where he did the mornings there. I didn't think he was really suited to be a morning man. I think Weasel's kind of more a, a kind of an afternoon or you know, more like a nighttime guy, I think. But anyhow, uh, he worked at the Globe there before they flipped format in uh, April of 2009 to fresh chick rock. So anyhow, uh, Weasel is, is, of course, 61. He's 61 and he's five foot four. So, uh, <laughs> and he's balding, according to this article. Uh, he worked at HFS, you know, way back from the 70s up through the through the 90s and you know even to the 2000s. So. Uh, Check up on Weasel there. Get, uh, you know, if you don't want to buy the post, go down to your favorite newsstand and uh, reach this one. It's a cool article. Plus, you can find it on the post's website. All right, folks. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, WMAL memories, audio memories for you today. So let's kick them off with this. As the noon report continues. Oops. <laughs> That was short, wasn't it? Let's let's do them all again. Let's time. Let's time. Let's have them play them all. As the noon report continues, for the ABC Information Network, I'm your Fox. Now on News Talk 6:30 WMAL, it's five minutes past five. This is early morning with Mark Weaver. Good morning, everyone, on this Friday, May 17th. Here's some of the stories that we're following on early morning. A new Montgomery County tax. Guilty conscience and ticks and chickens. In sports, baseball wants to get rid of Marge. Voted Washington's best news by the Associated Press. News Talk 630, WMAL, Washington. On News Talk 630, I'm Michael Reagan. Join me for more after ABC News. It's 4 o'clock. From ABC News, I'm Gil Fox. His death is a great loss, not just for the Navy and our armed forces, but for our entire country. You're listening Voted to Washington's Reagan. best news by the Associated Press. News Talk 630, WMAL, Washington. Early morning with Mark Weaver is next on News Talk 630. It's 5 o'clock. From ABC News, I'm Gil Fox. Were they live or not? W M A L AM 63 Stereo. W-M-A-L-A-M-6-30 
Alright folks, most of those are from, uh, I would guess, if you look here, the 90s, right? 94, 96, 99, you know, so we're looking at the, the mid-90s there for WMAL, back when they were stereo. <laughs> wow, AM stereo, that's going to save everything, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Alright folks, what? <laughs> ah! Hello, hello, where's the camera? What's the big news? The big news for the last couple days is, uh, well, I didn't do a Dave TV yesterday. Because, <laughs> you know what? I just got too damn busy. Too damn darn busy. PGC, WPGC. Uh, we're hearing some rumors that there may be some changes over there. They've been running on their website that they've been in shutdown mode. Apparently, they've sent all their DJs home. We wonder if that was uh, some kind of a stunt that had to coincide with the almost government shutdown last night. But um, there's a lot of rumors that PGC is going to tweak its format. You know, right now it's a pretty standard urban contemporary station kind of competing directly with WKYS, Radio 1. Um, and we're, we're hearing that they're going to maybe put a little more of a contemporary feel into the station, contemporary hit feel, uh, more of a uh, what you call a rhythmic contemporary, which would straddle contemporary hit Hot 99.5, whereas... You'd have Contemporary Hit Hot 99.5 over here, and you would have KYS or Ring Contemporary over here, and you'd have PGC kind of coming down the middle. So they would, PGC would not only be, right now PGC is pretty much stealing audience or trying to compete for audience with KYS, whereas if you positioned them in the middle there with a rhythmic contemporary format, you'd be competing more with a Hot 99.5 and KYS, kind of down the middle. That's what we're thinking is going to happen there, uh, so we shall see. Um, so, uh, you know, whether this could just be a funny little weekend stunt, who knows? <laughs> uh, Klug. Klug is now the morning man at the Bay, WZBA, Baltimore Classic Rocker at 100.7. Uh, he's replaced Michael Phila Filippelli. Michael Filippelli is out. Still no word on who the afternoon man might be, but I know the station is actively looking for somebody new for that slot. All right, folks. Um, Purdue University in Indiana is going to name its School of Communications after C-SPAN's Brian Lamb. So that's kind of interesting. And also we've got the um, radio uh, re ad revenue stats up on DCR-TV. You know, we told you a week or two ago that WTOP, All News, it was the top revenue ad billing station in the whole country last year at $57.2 million. Well, of course, that makes them the first top billing station in the uh, Washington area. Number two, interestingly enough, the number two top billing station in the Washington area last year was WPGC at 19.2 million. So look at the gap. TOP at 57 million, PGC at 19 million. That's the huge lead. WTOP has a massive lead, advertising revenue and in uh, in ratings, which makes you wonder, why doesn't somebody challenge them? Why doesn't somebody take an FM or out there and, and do a news format with it? You know, you don't have to do an expensive news format, just a stripped down headline traffic and weather on the every 10 minutes kind of format. You think somebody could do that and cut into TOP's big pie, but nope, nobody's going to do that. Why? I don't know. They're, stu they're stupid. <laughs> Anyhow, so anyhow, everybody just lays down and lets T.O.P. walk all over them. They, you know, But what the heck, Jim Farley and Jill Oxley are nice people, and they deserve it, right? All right, folks, Rob Pegararo is leaving the Washington Post. That means one less reason to subscribe to the paper. In fact, that's the only thing I read on Sundays, practically. The rest of the paper, you know, I read the A section and the dumb old ombudsman's column, but I always liked Rob Pegararo's technology column there. And uh, so the po I'm getting closer and closer to canceling my subscription, man. I'll tell you. Whoa! All right, folks. That's DCRDV Dave's Dave TV for today. The Saturday, the beautiful Saturday, kind of a glummish day out there, although the rain has stopped. Tomorrow should be a little better. And tomorrow, I'm going to go to the movies. And what am I going to say? I forget. That new Jake Gyllenhaal thing. But I'll tell you what that's like, anyhow. Anyhow, have a good one. And don't forget to stay the F tuned.